I am ZW and in this video we are creating Spider Gwen by mixing and matching a couple of resources found online. The first one is a $60 Haley Steinfeld head sculpt that I knew I had to buy because you almost never get a chance to own somebody else's files and observe their work up close, especially when it's so well done. And I've tried many times since 2019 to sculpt Haley, and clearly, I suck. So with her head almost done, I just wanted to modify it to make her look a little more lively and move her eyes up by masking the eyelid. She also has that iconic face when she's posing. Her left brow is always higher than the right and that is what I want to replicate. Also, I thought it would look nicer if her lips were slightly open, not like a smile but just neutral. Then I adjusted her ears to make it more accurate and moved on to her hair. Obviously, Spider Gwen from the Spider-Verse movie has that iconic hairstyle which I decided to make with a sphere. Then I thought, nah, there has to be an easier way to do this. So I found a 3D model of the Spider Gwen skin from Fortnite. We just had to export the hair out from Blender and import it back to our Haley head in ZBrush, scale it down and perfect. And now for the suit, I found another Spider Gwen model made for Dust 3D which is a posing and rendering software. And I tried out a few poses, tried to move the limbs by myself, but gave up because it's really hard. Then I settled with this pose, but with her arms slightly downwards. And to help out noobs like myself, they even sell pre-made poses for just hands specifically. And I found the web shooting hands which is really appropriate. So this is what I ended up with. Again, import it back to ZBrush and ta-da! It's low resolution but we can add more details later on. Now we just want to remove the mask and lower her hoodie thing by literally moving the mesh down like so. If you observe closely, the pose is not perfect. We need to fix the foot by bending it, adjusting the other foot to land flat on the ground and move the knee up so that all three contact points are on the same ground. There are also slight issues like the thighs getting out of shape, her arms as well, and we have to move it back in place. But yeah, I think we are ready to insert the body into the head. Just scaling it and seeing where it fits in the whole picture and it turns out that we don't really need to move the head because I simply cut off the neck, adjusted the suit accordingly and it just fits right in. I will probably stick with this pose so we can start adding details now starting with the hair. The overall shape is already there but you still need to fill in the blanks. What I'm doing here is add in large strokes to break down the overall shape then slowly add in tinier strands of hair. There is really no right or wrong way to do it, my goal is just to make it look natural. Plus, it's really, really tedious work, so my brain usually stressed. Now I'm just taking a break and giving the suit some textures. Apparently, Spider Gwen has triangles on her suit, and since the model's UVs are still intact, I decided to add those triangles onto the UV map on the black parts only and make them fully black and white, then apply it to the suit as a displacement map. So this is what it looks like, I feel that the triangles are too huge so I went back to make them smaller. And I also went back to the webbings to select them manually so that the patterns are smoother. After marking out the lines, we can move on to the face. I added some skin pores to the face so that it will show up more on the 3D print and continued with the hairstyling. Gwen's hair literally got teared off by Mouse Morales and she's like bored on one side so I had to find a way to add that on her skull. I'm using an animal fur brush to replicate the bars cut on her side. And that's about it. When I first saw the hairstyle, I knew I had to separate her fringe somehow because it's covering almost half of her face and it would be hard to paint. The idea is to mark out the front of her hair and separate it by masking it off and splitting it. And now we have two parts of the hair. Just like what I did earlier, I'm just repeating the steps and my brain is just chilling so there's a quick shout out to the people helping our channel survive. We've lost a couple of patrons sadly, but we do have three new members. Woohoo! Animation, RIFP, and Shipblade. We just need another three to add a new emoji, so let's make it happen. Click the join button now. Thank you. And by the time we reach the back, you can clearly tell how little crap I'm giving because I don't care about the back. We're almost at the finish line, I just need to add her eyebrows and boy does she have thick bushy brows, like good for her. And how can I forget her piercing, which are basically two spheres. 
and we can prep her for printing. I only want to separate her head from the suit for easier painting, that's all, and we are ready to print. As you all know, we just got a Mighty 8K from Frozen that was first shown in our Spider-Man train scene video, so watch that if you want to know more about it. This time, I want to know if the Mighty 8K could print an entire 1-6 scale body. And after some maneuvering in Lychee Slicer, I am very happy to report that we can print her in one piece without further cutting. And we can even include her head and the hair piece and print them all out at one go. Damn, I'm so impressed. If you're wondering why there's like a forest full of support for the leg portion of the suit, remember these stupid triangles I gave the suit? Well, they are creating a lot of islands. And like it's crazy. I need to manually support each and every one of them otherwise the printing could fail. But anything for a successful print, right? Now we can only cross our fingers and leave the rest to the printer. And this is why I love the Mighty 8K, because everything looks great. But to be sure, let's wash this resin off to have a closer look. Just like in real life, anyone with an open mouth tends to drool a little. It's okay, we can wipe it off. I used a mix of medium and light supports, so for the medium ones, I want to snip them off carefully so that they don't leave a hole. The rest should be okay to just peel off like this. A quick text fit for our hair and it's looking good. The body came out great as well. Most of the supports are under the suit so you know, nobody's gonna see it. I'm just gonna have some fun and peel them off. And remember the forest? They are all light supports, so thankfully they separated like butter. A quick clean up. I mean a quick close up look at what we have here. The patterns where the supports were seem to be a bit blurred out. There's a layer skip of sorts at the arm but nothing we can't fix with some sanding. And after a quick grey prime, we can start painting. What I'm thinking is to get the smaller colours out of the way first, like the pink near her armpit and her hoodie, blue for the shoes and then mask them to paint the bigger colours. You might think it's easy to mask since it's a simple straight line pattern. But I tried, and there's screws and bends, so I went for the dumb way and used Lutec instead. Now it's quite easy because I'm just using white primer for the suit. Then I found a thinner masking tape, so I used a pen knife and went over the borders accordingly, peeled off the areas that I want the black to be on, and bam! I did some quick cleaning up and filled up the blue patterns on her webs, and we can start on her head. No need for priming for this because it's already skin toned. I just want to add on the different shadings before I airbrush over it to make it more subtle. Then I'm going in with some red sprinkles and some tents. As for the makeup, I will do it manually with some purple and orange, some black for her thick eyebrows, and whites for her whites. So Spider Gwen has blue eyes, but Haley has green eyes, and I'm already bad at likenesses, so we're just gonna stick with her green. But her green has a tint of brown inside, so I'm adding that as well. As for her lashes, I'm only drawing the bottom one because I want to try real lashes for her top. We will have to leave that at the last step. Let's get the hair over and done with. It's just a simple brown, then some gold mixed with the same brown. Now the tutorial I was following wanted me to glue those lashes on one at a time. But you know me, I'm lazy AF. So my brain wanted me to just cut part of the lashes and glue them straight on. And please excuse my head because I need to do this up close. So now we just need to cut them short and paint some chrome paint for her piercing and that's it. This is how you can sculpt something by merging other resources together. And I'm still really impressed with the printer and how well it did. If you like this, please consider liking the video and I will see you next time.